once around the cosmic owl. So the cosmic owl was the name given to this particular image that we have here with the two bright eyes surrounded by a face and then the blue central region being the beak. Now we now know what's going on here. The two uh, sides that are making up the eye and the eye sockets are galaxies and the blue part in the center is where those two galaxies are touching. And that collision is creating shock waves, which is causing a lot of new stars to form. And when stars form, you get a mixture of sizes, everything from the small red dwarfs in large numbers through to the rather less common but much more powerful blue hot giant stars. And because they are so much more powerful and massive, they give off a lot more light and give us this intense blue color. But they don't last long. And so where we see blue stars, we know that stars have been being formed recently. And that is the first real clue to the fact that this is a collisional shock front between two galaxies. Now, the cosmic owl is, in fact, a very long way away and very, very old indeed. In terms of distance, we haven't measured the distance by any of the normal methods that I talk about, such as parallax or uh, type 1a supernovae or uh, Cepheid variables or any of those. This is entirely because the light from it, as revealed by looking at the spectrum, is redshifted by a factor of 14%. We have a redshift of 1.14. And that actually corresponds to the expansion of the universe having stretched the light by that amount as the light was passing through. And if you work all of that out, you get a distance of 9.1 billion light years. So the light that has been arriving into the cameras to make this image has been traveling two thirds the age of the universe in order to get to us. This is an immense distance and it's incredible that uh, we are able to make images of these things. So we can see the main picture, the sort of more optically normal picture uh, where it says Z equals 1.14, the redshift, and then a color enhanced image um, showing the eyes and the beak, the northwest and southeast eyes and the beak in the center with that uh, false color rendition of it there. So fascinating little uh, object, very, very long way away. And it was first found by the Cosmos deep field image, but followed up by spectroscopy and imaging with the James Webb telescope, ALMA, uh, at, which is a radio telescope, and the VLA in Chile. And it's been possible to work out not only the distance of 9.1 billion light years, but from that and the size that it appears, we can say that each of these two galaxies that are forming the eyes of the cosmic owl are about 26,000 light years in diameter. So considerably smaller than the Milky Way. The Milky Way would be four times that in diameter. And um, so these are relatively modest galaxies, but this backs up the idea that galaxies grow big by mergers because back then you wouldn't have had time to build large galaxies um, uh, other than by exactly what we're seeing here. Uh, but what we think we're seeing is this galaxy collision, and quite often when galaxies collide, you can form fantastic structures. You can have tidal tails thrown out um, in different directions and great swirls of new star formation going on. But occasionally you can get an almost head-on event. And that's what we see in this uh, rather more nearby and better image of what's called a ring galaxy. What's happened here is that one galaxy has passed almost directly straight through the middle of another one, and it creates a, an outward going shock wave, which triggers off generations of new star formation in a ring around the central axis. Um, and the stars are flung out in that direction as well. Uh, so quite chaotic. But we don't see too many of these because it does need rather a head on crash. 
But the symmetry of the owl, uh, cosmic owl picture there rather suggests that this is very much a meeting of equals in a very symmetrical manner. And we can work out that there's about 320 billion solar masses divided roughly equally between the two galaxies, so about 160 billion solar masses each. So fairly heavyweight, even though they're not particularly large at the moment, but they will form one larger galaxy once things calm down. And there's again that famous picture with the blue beak in the middle and the galaxies around the outside. But we can delve inside what's going on in those very bright central regions of the galaxies. And what we think we have is that each has a supermassive black hole in the center. And this is where they're slightly different. One, we think, is 67 million solar masses, and the other one, a more modest 26 million solar masses. Those are pretty heavyweight. The one in the middle of the Milky Way is only four. So these are much more massive black holes controlling these two colliding galaxies. And in future, not only will the galaxies merge, but it's highly likely that the black holes will find each other and merge together and create an even more massive central object. While they're in this rather chaotic system, it's a lot of gas and dust being hurled around, indeed whole stars being hurled in different directions in the galaxy by all of the shock waves. And material is finding its way towards the black hole and then getting into a death spiral, an accretion disk, as it spirals in and friction heats the material up to immense temperatures. And so we see both of the black holes feeding and pouring out large amounts of radiation. That's why the central regions of those galaxies are so bright. For one of them, the Northwest Eye galaxy, we've detected that it has a jet, uh, has a pair of jets, a bipolar jet, north and south, along the magnetic spin axis of the uh, central black hole. The magnetic field tends to twist as the black hole spins rapidly, and that whips up charged particles into a couple of beams or jets that shoot out of the galaxy. And it seems that one of those jets is actually also pointing into the shockwave front uh, between the two galaxies and lighting it up where it dumps its energy in that region. And that shockwave and the uh, energy from the jet dumping into that region is causing this huge number of new stars to being formed. Hence the blue color where we see a lot of the short-lived massive blue giant stars while they're still around, knowing therefore that this is a fairly current operation. Although I say current, we are looking back in time we're looking 9.1 billion light years away. So this event uh, happened and then the light's taken that long to travel to us. So we are looking way back in the early history of the universe. And I'm just going to finish up now with a diagram of really all of that. So the cosmic owl with the two eyes where the black holes and the active galactic nuclei are, the jet in the northwest galaxies, north and south, shooting material out into space many, many light years, tens of thousands of light years out, emitting radio waves, and then dumping its energy and illuminating the material and helping to trigger off the uh, shock waves into starburst creation of huge numbers of new stars in the middle there in the gap between the two colliding galaxies. And so there we have it. There is the picture of one of these very, very old collisions, the cosmic owl. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks very much for listening.